Welcome to the podcast that explores mysterious disappearances, bizarre worldly occurrences, strange phenomenon, and basically everything that's weird. Welcome to the podcast, everything that's weird. We're your hosts, Brandon and Anthony, and tonight we're talking about Antarctica, Admiral Bird, and ancient civilizations. Yeah, suck it, flat earthers. <laughs> <laughs> Just so we don't like alienate anybody, Middle, <laughs> Middle Earth and Flat Earth, totally different vibes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> flat earthers say. That Antarctica is just a sheet of ice that's... It's an ice wall. ...several miles tall. Yeah, and it, and, it just goes around the and edge. And it is the border of the disk mm-hmm. that is the Earth. I, you know, the thing with those guys is it's really crazy how convincing... Like, I don't believe it. But, like, how convincing <laughs> they are when they talk about it. <laughs> like, but it's it's kind of like this story. This story is yeah, I don't, a little out there. The flat earthers, I think, are idiots. <laughs> they do nothing. I, I've never seen a flat earther to give you a model to scale. It's always like the sun's always, like, right next to the moon, right next to the earth. It's a lot of little experiments. Yeah, that they've proved themselves wrong before. Well, the worst was that tweet or X or whatever you call it now, when he's like, you know, flat earthers from around the globe are coming <laughs> to our convention. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, come on, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was funny. You destroyed your own theory in a tweet right. yeah. in one sentence. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the one right. guy did an experiment with a helicopter where they like went across the lake and they put a camera at level looking across the lake and they got in the helicopter and when they went over there, he, he's like, I can't see you anymore. How high are you off the ground? They were like, like 30 feet. <laughs> and they were like, oh, uh-oh. <laughs> and I, I do, like, I do get it. There's some things that like, uh, that really like play with your eyesight. Mm-hmm. There, there's optical illusions obviously yeah, sure. you know so mm-hmm. I get it and I, I'm i one of the first ones to say who's taking that picture in space <laughs> when they take the picture of the space shuttle from back I mean who took that picture right you know what I mean? so I'm the, and I, I'm the first one to say that but like there is an explanation most of the time mm-hmm but anyway, um, anyway, this so first we'll start off with Admiral Byrd. This is we could do like a whole series. We could do a whole podcast on Antarctica. Yeah. But would it would it say like what's weird about Antarctica? There's um, a hollow Earth story about um, uh, like a very respected admiral in the Navy. There mm-hmm. is um, some natural phenomenon if you would call it that or like like signs of like you know structures that were there like ancient pyramids and then there's like mm-hmm. further was they're actually like you know an advanced civilization so we'll just start with admiral bird he is he's got quite the lineage Anybody that's related to Pocahontas <laughs> right. I mean right. come on I, yeah. If that doesn't get you into every college, yeah, he's I got mean, he's got a lot of people in this. But the, he, the, so John takes the cake. Though. Yeah, but John Roth, who's yeah. married to Pocahontas, is his is in his lineage, um, and he is he's friends with some like he's friends with uh, Edsel Ford, and um, who I didn't. She is. Uh, Henry Ford's son, like daughter-in-law, mm. and and that makes sense. The Edsel, the car. Right. <laughs> right. I, I, I put that together, literally like two days ago. I didn't know the history of the Edsel, but um, yeah. So, so he has a ridiculous lineage. Um, 
but he doesn't have money because he doesn't finish the Virginia Military Institute and has to leave and joins the Navy. But he gets he gets pretty high up in the Navy. Pretty yeah, quick. relatively quick for you know um, how high a rank he got. So yeah. one thing I read about him was that he was supposed to be <laughs> which um, he got the rear admiral, which is got to be number one funniest rank of any military <laughs> right you know <laughs> <laughs> congratulations on being rear admiral oh. <laughs> uh, i read something about him that he was supposed to be on a blimp flight yeah that yeah. crashed and it crashed yeah and his, not everybody he, died, um, but a lot of people died. Well, he missed his train, right? Right. So he thought this was like kind of like his fate, like you know things weren't working out for him, but it ended up being like his saving grace. Mm-hmm. So he he flies over the North Pole. He was in that contest by some millionaire at the time who could fly the transatlantic flight. To Paris, but he lost to Charles Lindbergh. Mm-hmm. But he does fly across the North Pole, even though that's kind of disputed. But he flies across the South Pole. He does several, um, several different Arctic and Antarctic uh, expeditions, yeah. and uh, the first one. Is in the twenties, late twenties, then one in the thirties, and then um, the main one that we're going to talk about is he is his fourth mission, and it's called Operation High Jump. Mm-hmm. So Operation High Jump, they believed at the time, they believed. When I say they, I say the government believe that the um, Nazis, which they were, mm-hmm. very interested in Antarctica for a bunch of reasons. One was Hitler. This kind of this I, I've read. I've read this in a bunch of different places. Was obsessed with our treating of the N- Native Americans, and that was kind of his. Um, model for a society, but one thing he really liked about America was like our geographical advantage, military wise. Yeah, and that you know we're we're on our own. You see people coming. Um, mm-hmm. We kind of had control of of our portion of the globe. You got two throwaway countries on either side of us. All right. And he was he was really interested in starting up in Antarctica and he knew by these expeditions that it was like super rich in resources, which makes sense because it hadn't been touched in a very long time. Mm-hmm. Um so he sends people down there and at the time Norway had laid claim. Wasn't to it Antarctica. also about uh, whale fat too? Oil, absolutely, because they were yeah. the number one. They were the number one consumer of whale oil. Yeah, and he the was margarine. trying to like. Oh, I didn't know that's what it's for. <laughs> was it really? Yeah, they love their butter. The yep. Germans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's there's two things Germans love: <laughs> <laughs> margarine. <laughs> and beer. <laughs> yeah. Um so he really liked the advantage of of Antarctica. Mm. And he sent teams down there and they literally like just took the Norwegian flags out and got to toss them. <laughs> uh, and they did set up a base um called Base 211. Mm-hmm. And that was what, when we won in World War II, when the Allies won in World War II, they were, they thought it was much deeper than that. They thought that they were actually setting up a fourth 
Reich. Hmm. And the reason they thought that was because on his flyovers, he saw that not all of Antarctica was ice. And this is true. So this is kind of crazy. It just in and of itself is that there is um, a very natural phenomenon that happens called the the Bunger Oasis or the Bunger Hills and another like terrible name. But there's <laughs> legit like lakes that are like 40 degrees with no snow. And it's it's a pretty big area. It's mm-hmm. it's like three hundred square miles yeah. of these um I don't think they're freshwater, right? They're like brackish. Mm-hmm. They're both. They're I, not they're not seawater. Uh, but they they're would, also if they're in Antarctica, they would have to be freshwater. Because it'd just be snow melt. Snow and ice melt. Well, I thought they came up from because it'd be solid. Because so I thought rock. that I thought that part of it was there were these caverns from the, like the underneath the ice, mm-hmm. and they thought that they were able to like find their way through the in like U boats, mm-hmm. and they were able to find their way through these like underground rivers and lakes, and created their own base basically. All right. So he's down there. He takes 4,000 people down there, which is a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I remember growing up, our town was not much bigger than that. Right. <laughs> so, so he takes a whole town's worth of people down to Antarctica to explore. And, and if you see the videos, it's very, they do a lot of reenactment, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. Um. But they had a whole armada. I mean, it was a full-blown... There was 13 ships. Absolutely. There were battleships. There were submarines. There was... um, You had two armed seaplanes. There was all kinds... They had, like, a whole armada going down there. They were like, we're going to explore. (laughs) And... Right. (laughs) <laughs> right, yeah. but but like they do, and if you watch the YouTube video of Operation High Jump, they land on these lakes, mm-hmm. and they like and they say that there's more coal, you know, that could there's enough coal to fuel the the Earth for you know several hundred years. Yeah, they and what they find is that it's super rich in oil, uranium, which was important at the time. Um, I guess that's still important, yeah. but, um, coal, just basically any natural resource that they have. So all that's all good. But what's weird about his expedition is that it ends kind of early. And when it ends, um, they had a they 35 kinda... ton snow crusher. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. But so, it ends, it ends, and when it ends early, they kind of, like, go back, and it ends, like, like a year and a half early, right? Uh, yeah, they took weather, bad weather. That's what they say. Yeah. That's what they say, and then he is... Oh, that's uh, right, you guys can't see me doing air quotes. <laughs> he is a hero. Uh, he's, you know... Yeah. He goes back, and everybody is... That dude's had like awesome. three ticker tape parades. Yeah, he's he's like a national hero. Yeah. He's he's like the most decorated naval officer like ever. He is older, and they do another expedition in the sixties. He's not there, but he's like an advisor, right? And right around this time, he dies. Yeah, and when he dies, he has like you know diaries and memoirs or whatever. And, um, well, this is what happens in part of his part. In the end of one of his diaries, he says that he's flying over the it's South his Pole. Flight, it's like a flight log. It's a flight log, and he's 10. 
He's like 10 miles, whatever, away from the North Pole, south, north. I guess it doesn't matter, right? South. Uh, South, is he south? Yeah. Okay, so he's 10 miles south, North Pole, and he says all of a sudden his the planes aren't responding, but they're still flying. And then over the radio, he gets um, a message from somebody saying, don't worry, we know who you are. You're in good hands. And he says, then the whole terrain changes. And it's like lush and there's trees and stuff. And he realizes he's flying into the earth. He saw a woolly mammoth. Well, I was getting there, but go ahead. That was before that. <laughs> that's before he got taken by the aliens. He saw that first. Okay. Sorry. It's okay. So <laughs> he saw he a woolly little, mammoth, and then the aliens mammoth. got him. Then they take control of his plane. Mm-hmm. And yes, then... his propeller stopped spinning. So. They're in control of him, and they bring him into this like super futuristic city. Yeah. Um, and it's run by these aliens called the Ariani, which is a little too close to Aryan. Right? Well, well, that's what the there was a there was a uh, cultist group of the Nazi Nazis that were on the expedition to go when they sent their people to Antarctica called the Thule. Okay. And they, they believed that there was this advanced civilization that lived in the earth that was um, called Aryans. So, okay. So all of a sudden his temperature reads that it's 74 degrees outside. Um, and then he goes in, and then he's flanked by, like, flying saucers, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they have swastikas on them. Mm-hmm. And of course. Th- well, you know, what are you going to do? <laughs> like an alien Nazis. <laughs> so they bring him in, and they have, like, a talk with him, basically. And, and they're slight, like, subtle German accent. Yeah, you know, I don't know how you like your aliens, <laughs> <laughs> but I like an alien that enjoys a good Oktoberfest. Right, <laughs> right. Some fried pickles and <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah. Fucking <laughs> Wiener Schnitzel, <laughs> some lederhosen, right? Like yeah. you're like he's like God's. You're like Godspeed, and he's like lederhosen. Yeah. <laughs> um, so he gives him this this alien, this tall, blonde-haired, good-looking alien, gives him. I just added the good-looking. I don't know. How you <laughs> but he gives him a message, and he says, "Hey, look, here's the deal. Um, you know, you're very respected on the surface, um, and yeah, you're in Middle Earth. This is Middle Earth." So you're respected (laughs) on the surface. So we respect you. We want you to go up and tell everybody, um, you know, the nuclear war thing. Yeah. Out out of control. It's getting out of hand, man. It's getting out of control. Settle down. We we tried to go, but they fight (laughs) us every, which I believe that, right? If there's anything to play, (laughs) like, They're like, they shoot at us and stuff. We're like, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah, that's what they said, too. Like, hey, <laughs> shoot. Every time we go out, they shoot at us. Um, and so he's charged with delivering this message that, you know, nuclear. We're not ready for atomic energy. None of it. We don't mm-hmm. know. The res- we don't understand the responsibility of it. We don't understand the severity of it. And he's supposed to take this back, which he does according to the story. And then when he does, he, uh, they pull out of Antarctica. Mm -hmm. So of course, since then, everybody, they, there's been a treaty in the late sixties that nobody owns Antarctica. 
So nobody can lay claim to it. You're allowed to be there for scientific research. Um, Mm -hmm. And it is super interesting because they have found crazy stuff. There's a whole set of mountain ranges that look like giant pyramids and they're in the shape of pyramids. And all the time on Reddit or uh, Instagram, people pull up stuff that they're searching for in Antarctica and they find, you know, it looks like portals or holes or caves or mm-hmm. whatever. Um, not to mention that there is like folklore that there is that there is um, an ancient civilization that lived on the ca- continent of Antarctica not that long ago. Um, and that is actually documented in maps, whether you believe it or not. But there's like folklore that it was actually like a lush climate. And what they're kind of looking for now and like what's kind of being leaked out now is that there are, they haven't found like buildings, but there's evidence of like plant life and whatever deep when they do deep cores of ice, um, you know, drillings that there, there, there are evidence. There is evidence of, of like something was there before. So Admiral Byrd, did he go into Middle Earth? Are there pyramids in Antarctica? And better yet, is this a lost civilization that maybe has been frozen over by some kind of pole shift or climate? Um, I don't want to say climate change, but like a climate, you know, uh, redirection or something yeah. that covered up like an ancient civilization. So. Let's get into some facts. Okay. Okay. So I got obsessed with Antarctica because right before Airbnb, there was something called Couch Surfers. And a friend of a friend was coming to LA and he's like, hey, uh, a buddy of mine, I took a science class in college. It's going to be in L.A., and he's on this thing called Couch Surfers. Um, do you care if he stays at your place for, like, two nights? And it was this guy <laughs> named Ben. And uh, we're like, yeah, man, whatever. You know, we're in our 20s. So he shows up, and he's kind of like, uh, he's a bookworm, dude. This guy is like, you know, <laughs> it's just... <laughs> just like exactly what I say. His glasses is kind of a kind of a smaller guy, black hair. And uh we're like, hey man, you want a beer or something? He's like, Yeah, I have a beer. So, you know, we're like, hey, we're gonna play some poker. You wanna play some poker? He's like, sure. So we're playing poker. And bro drops out, yeah, when I was in Antarctica. And I'm like, what? <laughs> He's like yeah, and I was 27 at the time, 26. Mm-hmm. And he's like I'm, like, I'm like, you went to Antarctica? I'm like, are you a scientist? He's like, no. <laughs> I'm like. <laughs> Janitor. <laughs> I'm like, oh, what do you do? Are you an engineer? He's like, no. I'm like, what do you do? He, like, he was like a systems analyst. He's mm. like, yeah, but that's not why I went. He's like, I, uh. I didn't know what to do when I graduated. <laughs> he's like, so I was like online and it said, do you want to work in Antarctica? And he's like, sure. <laughs> so he took, so here's this crazy. He, he just went on this site and was like, yeah, I, I, uh, I just graduated college. And so they're like, okay, uh, there's all these jobs you can do. So one of the jobs he did, he drove this bus between stations. <laughs> and it's this giant bus with no windows. And we're like, it doesn't have any windows. He's like, you can't have windows. 
It's like it would <laughs> blow the whole thing over. He's mm. like, unless you're in a really tight, compact thing, you can't have windows. So this thing had no windows, and he would shuttle people back and forth. He said, if you go outside ever, you have to, it's the buddy system. You have to have somebody with you. Yeah. Because you can white out. You white out, and they have like these tether lines. Where you you strap on to walk from building to building because mm -hmm. at any time, like the catabatic winds. Am I saying that right? It sounds right. Okay, they just whip up. We we'll have to get Mario on that one. Yeah, maybe. Um, and they just whip up and whatever. It's just yeah, everything like goes white. So he had like yeah. a dorm. Mm -hmm. He was a bus driver, and then <laughs> everybody has to have two jobs. So even if you're a scientist, even if that's what you do, you have to you have to be a janitor or you have yeah. to be a cook. So he was a bus driver and he worked at the bar. So they have a <laughs> bar. They yeah. have a bar in Antarctica. And he said, dude, listen, he's like, during the week, it's pretty quiet. He's like, people come in, they have a beer or two, you know. He's like, but on Saturday, it gets crazy. He's like, all the different camps come to this one bar. So, like, he said, the Australians are nuts. He's like, those guys, <laughs> they, they drink more than anybody else. So, he said that they all come together at this one bar, and they, uh, they just party on Saturday. Like, Saturday, they just, they rip it up. They go crazy. Yeah. And the karaoke, and they just have a good, they like let loose, you know, because it's tough being down there, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> and he's there for six months, and then, uh, and then you're done. So you're on this like tour or whatever. And he said he knew people that stayed the winter, but the winter population goes way down, yeah. Um, so people that live, I don't know, do we have a number on that? Yeah, in the summer months, it's like 5,000. And then in the winter months, it's just a few hundred. Right. So, like, it dwindles pretty fast. So, like, but they're constantly getting, you know, they're constantly getting supplies and whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but I was fascinated with that. Mm -hmm. So... I, ever since I've been hooked on it, and then when YouTube started dropping these animal bird things, I even more like you know, and then um, I was like fascinated with that there was an oasis for one thing that you know you think it's just like the end of the world and you know nothing can survive there, but there's actually like some kind of geothermal activity that keeps it these lakes you know above freezing at least for part of the year well and that place is bigger than the united states so it is it's it's fifth right or it's fourth it's it's so because russia i think it's uh, we'll get mario on that but i think it's four i think it's the fourth biggest land mass as they count it as a country even though it's not a country but I think it's Russia, China, Canada, Antarctica, and us. I think. Yeah, I saw an overlay map once with um, America placed on it, and it goes. America goes like kind of like edge to edge, but there's like a top and bottom that still fill out. That's way bigger. Yeah. Well, so. and and I feel like Alaska is all never counted. Yeah. Yeah. It I was mean, like Hawaii, America. Yeah, Hawaii's tiny. You can drive around. Yeah. I the Big Island, we drove around it in like a couple hours. But like Alaska is like I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, is it like almost half the size of the continental United States? Yeah, it's pretty close. Yeah. So like there's um so Antarctica is always getting slighted. But it's it's crazy. There's all kinds of natural phenomenon, like there's blood falls. And they think that's for like iron deposits, but it literally looks like blood is flowing out of the ice. Mm -hmm. It's just deep red waterfall, basically. And they think it's just like iron 
deposits that are coming, you know, through the ice. Hmm. Which is crazy when you think about like the ore and how much gold and silk, like platinum, like how much hard metals are in there, you know. Never know. Um, never know, right. Um, but there's several camps there. Several different countries um, have stations there. We've set up several camps there. Um, Admiral Byrd set up a camp there. Um Nazis and did. The Nazis did. And um yeah, it's on the bottom of the earth. But the big the big question with the first part is Admiral Byrd. So he's he flies into Middle Earth, not flat earth. <laughs> Middle <laughs> Earth has um a whole other meaning, not that like, you know, where flat earth were two dimensional. Whereas Middle Earth, um, there's a, there's surface dwellers, and then there's people that live in the Earth. So, like little fun fact, I won't name them, I won't Bubba Gump it, but like there's <laughs> a whole list of civilizations mm. throughout history that talk about Middle Earth. Yeah. So they. Or in one way or another. They either say that their ancestors are from caves or they came up uh, from the underworld or that there is an underworld or in medieval times, there's like in Ireland, there were knights that went, you know, into the underworld. Mm -hmm. Um, In China, they just recently, I think it was pretty sure it was China. In China, they just recently found like a cave. Did you see that where the it was like completely hand carved out with p- big columns left out of the no, carved no, out of the rock? And it, it was it's pretty wild because it's it would be really 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 old, and um, it was all hand carved out, <clears throat> but it was so, like a, out of solid rock. Okay, Mark, how big is Antarctica? So as far as countries go, it's the second biggest behind Russia. Really. But then continents, it's number five. Yeah, I mean, you go to Asia, yeah, Asia, Africa, North America, South America, then Antarctica. But if it was a country, which I yeah. guess it's a territory, if it was a country, it'd be second. Yeah, it goes Russia, Antarctica, Canada, China, U.S., and then Brazil, okay. Australia. Yeah, Brazil's a Brazil's it's, it's a sleeper. No, no count them. But um. So the Middle Earth is a thing in history, L- kind of like Noah's, like the, uh, the the Great Flood, right? Yeah. A lot of civilizations mention Middle Earth. And the reason why that's important, and whether or not the government is telling us the truth, is that when all of this, the <laughs> UAP, UFO, all that shit came out, right? Mm-hmm. Where they're like... Hey, I know COVID, but you know, there's aliens, and everybody's like, Yeah, <laughs> I don't really care about the aliens. Tell us about COVID. But, like, right. The, one of the first early on things they said is they've always been here. They're not like there's a, a large part of them have always been here. They're not from outer space, <laughs> just chilling in Antarctica. Well, all over. So it's been said that more of space has been explored than the ocean. Yeah. And I kind of believe that. Yeah. I think that was, I think Neil deGrasse Tyson said that he like held up a glass of water and he's like, this is how much, if you take all the water in the world, this is how much has been explored. And I mean, it makes sense because I've seen where like I've seen pictures of whales that have like giant bite marks out of them. Yeah, yeah, right. You've yeah. seen that, right? Well, you know, the um, colossal squid and the giant squid both were discovered because of um, marks on like sperm whale. 
Oh, really? They had these giant suction cup marks on them and, and big claw marks on them. And they were like, what the hell is making these marks on these whales? And then they found um, a Chinese fishing vessel ended up catching one in the net. And, it, um, and then they you know, eventually proved it. They found some more specimens of them. But they like live down underwater so deep that nobody ever sees them. I mean, they're gigantic, you know, monstrous. Mario could probably look up the size of a colossal squid or a giant squid. But <laughs> you're talking about like a massive creatures that nobody even knew about until just very recently. So, there's so. Okay, the other thing is it's it's kind of like they've said 21 million years that it's been under ice. Yeah. But there's a Turkish map. I don't know how much you believe the people in Turkey, but like there's a Turkish map. It's one of like the from... oldest civilizations have been found in <laughs> Turkey. <laughs> right? And oddly... They're in control of Noah's Ark too, but what does it say? Okay, the colossal squids, thirty-nine to forty-six feet long. He's a tall drink of water. That's a big. That's a big fucking thing to be in the water, <laughs> taking on sperm whale and shit. Yeah. Um. Well, it's the sperm that whale. That them. That's what it's doing is the sperm whales attacking them and eating them and they're defending themselves. So they get these giant claw marks and suction cup marks on them. Have you seen that TikTok where the um, the kids are survivors of dad jokes? <laughs> <laughs> and he's, like, he's like, my dad said, how do you make an octopus laugh? He's like tentacles, <laughs> <laughs> and it was like now he hates marine life on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> but there is a map from 500 years ago. Um, it was discovered in Turkey. It's called um, on. It was on gazelle skin, right? <laughs> it's called the P- the Piri Reis map. Yeah. I've heard of it. And yeah. and it, it shows Antarctica as like a legit country that's like up and running. Yeah. Um and that's that's kind of interesting because you know at that time, especially at that time, when you go to like a thousand AD Basically, until you know, they discovered well, they rediscovered the West because people were here, but like that was a big time for like Vikings and all kinds of um, explorers, you know, trying to find out what the world looks like, right? Mm -hmm. And then you know, you have cartographers, am I saying that right? Yeah. Oh, yeah right. Yes. Okay. Uh, plotting, you know, all these things, um, all these places they've been, whether it's accurate or not, who knows? But this particular map shows Antarctica as like a lush country, not mm-hmm. ice. Yeah. There's also there's a few islands. Um, um, Mario, there's. Can you check the islands close to Antarctica that nobody's ever been on? Yeah. So I, these have only been only a few. Whereas Antarctica, you know, there's. I guess it, it's a tiny part of the population of Earth that's ever been on Antarctica. Period. But like. I did a kitchen for a guy that went on and went to Antarctica. He was on a cruise out of Argentina and, <laughs> and they dropped him off. There's one point that they'll let you get off in Antarctica, take pictures, 
there's a few penguins for yeah you know and then and then they you know you get back on the ship and you leave hey, do you remember it, when we were lied to on chili willy and there oh yeah of course some penguin and the polar bear you know why yeah, that's that's like a great riddle you know i never i never you, i don't even remember how old i was when i finally realized that polar bears were in the arctic and penguins were in the in antarctica <laughs> <laughs> they were never near each other. They were they were as far away from each other as you could possibly be. So Bird did go to both. He did fly over both. Mm-hmm. And it's important to say Well that... the North Pole one is still on I I read up on his North Pole one and it sounds fishy. Well like he, turned he lied, before right? he got all the yeah, like he turned around before right. he got there. Because it this time didn't make sense and shit. There's uh, do you watch Curb Your Enthusiasm? Uh no. Okay, <laughs> pretty funny. I, I mean, what I've a, seen it here and there, but okay, okay. Well, one of them was Larry meets a guy that's Japanese, and he said, uh, "Yeah, my my father was kamikaze pilot," and he's like, "Really? Wow, that's crazy," and he's like. How old are you? And he's like, "Hey, I am fifty-five." And he's like, "Well, how? How was your dad a kamikaze? Your dad was a kamikaze pilot?" Said, yeah. He's like, "Well, isn't that like a suicide mission?" He's like, "He he grazed grazed the ship." <laughs> <laughs> He didn't crash it. Well, he grazed it. He grazed it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, he he his co-pilot said later that he didn't actually he wasn't the first one to fly across the North Pole because they didn't actually make it. Yeah. But let me just say this. As somebody that has flown a plane with minimal, with very minimal technology attached to it, flying a plane over the North Pole, Jesus Christ, yeah. at that time. Uh, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Like, the balls. Well, you most, have of, to have most to of his uh, commendations were from those those flights and journeys and shit and, and exploration trips. So I think yeah, it's like one what his Medal of Honor was for. So it's Scott Island, Mario, right? Yeah, I'm seeing there's some that they can't definitively say that no one's been on. Well, it's not that nobody's been on them. They're super restricted. Yeah, they're super restricted. Scott Island, and that that I, that is right. Yeah. It's so it is so unlike Antarctica, right off there's an archipelago. Man, I'm just dropping it today. Yeah. So archipelago there's an archipelago. Fucking thesaurus of, over here. <laughs> off of Antarctica that's Scott Island, you're right. I, there's some kind of endangered something there. I forget, I don't know what it is, but only a handful of scientists have been there, and I think because it's relatively new, and I don't know exactly why. Hold on, some kind of but bird. Not very. I don't know if it's a bird or if it's like it's a fairly new island chain. Hmm. Uh, but nobody's allowed to go there except for researchers, and it's it's pretty important. But it is weird to me. To me, just on the outside looking in, that all of a sudden, right, <laughs> the world can't agree on anything, right? <laughs> <laughs> We're constantly fighting. We're constantly going to war. People are constantly protesting wars on both sides, even right now. Yeah. Right? But, like, everybody's two like, places, don't go fucking in there. <laughs> two places where, like, there is, like, peace in the middle east is in space and antarctica we have been there's one more there's an island and it's in the indian ocean 
and it's oh, south of okay. India, and nobody talking... is allowed to go there. And the one guy that tried to go there and bring him Jesus Christ, they filled him they full of him. arrows. <laughs> that is before he even um... made it to the shore. He was like throwing Bibles to him and shit. That is, yeah, like they could read. Yeah. Like they're going to read English. They, they, planes have got close and they literally have thrown, shot arrows and thrown spears at the plane. Um, I know what that is. It's on the tip of my tongue. Mario, can you? His Rockefeller was, he disappeared there. Yeah, that's right. And that, that's what, that's what, that is right. Right. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. Um, but space and Antarctica are two places where, like, Russians, even during the Cold War, Russians and Americans work together, which is crazy to me. Like, there's, in my opinion, something's going on there. There is something that benefits everybody that they either it's knowledge or resources. Or I don't know what, but like, I remember my roommate was like, you know, he was kind of a stoner, um, but he was also like a Yoda. And <laughs> I, I, we were talking about this one time and just about electric cars that just come out. And I said, we were just talking about it. He's like, you know how there was like, you know, the copper age and then there was like the bronze age. He's like, we're just in the oil age. And I'm like, man, I never thought of it like that. <laughs> I never, that's pretty heavy, right? A lot of petroleum products. Yeah, but like, if that's what you have, yep. you know, until something else is discovered before, before there was no plastic, you know? Like, my, my grandpa was a toy maker. He literally was. Like the forefront. Oh, Rockefeller disappeared in Papua New Guinea. Yeah, that's what. That's where that is. No, nah, that's the island. It's not the island I'm talking about. The island I'm talking about. Nobody's the allowed Sen- to go to. Sentinel Island. Is that what it's called? Mar. Looking at that. Um. But like. It's bizarre that there's all these people working together. They all share knowledge with each other, which is another thing that's like doesn't happen, right? right? Except for space in Antarctica, right? <laughs> that's it. Sentinel that, Island, yeah, North Sentinel Island, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. That's a no-go and, zone for everybody. There's like a, a, there might even be a UN agreement about it. I don't, I don't know, but nobody's allowed to the, go there. And they're, it's they're completely still, untouched. Yeah, it's completely untouched. That those people have witnessed like a small ham over the years, like decades. They've witnessed a few people, like, and a couple planes have got close. Yeah, any ship that's got close has been fired upon or attacked, and so nobody's gotten close. They be, whoever's get got there has been killed, and it's very few people, just a small handful, but. From what I know, and then it's pretty wild. There, so whatever's going on in that island, it's all up to them. Nobody's, to, they're still living primitively. But Antarctica has no people. There's no natives. There, yeah, there's no natives. Which is Anymore. also weird to me. Anymore. <laughs> Because it's oh, like I, I, you know, I've always said that I know we've talked about the, the possibility, yeah, the that there's totally the possibility that this civilization's been reset once at least, maybe even more. Who knows? You know, um, and that that kind of brings us to the pyramids of Antarctica. Mm-hmm. If you see them, uh, of course. The first time you see, you're like, that's a mountain. But then, but then <laughs> you go to what mountains were pyramids. Mm-hmm. So there's one in Bosnia mm-hmm. that looks like a hill. And you're like, that's a hill. Yeah. 
And then they started excavating it, and there's full on stones that like are it's it's a pyramid. Yeah, and that's the thing. Um, if you said it looks like there's pyramids in Antarctica it, uh, under any other circumstance, and it'd be like, what's the big deal? I don't even you know what's that even mean. But mm-hmm. the fact that the there's pyramids literally on like every continent. Right. <laughs> that That's are crazy. proven except for Antarctica would be the only one that, that we're like, we don't know. But that so it would be the outlier if it didn't have them. You know what I mean? And I mean, you know, when you talk about crazy natural phenomenon, um, completely unrelated, I was watching Joe Rogan about the Amazon. And the guy said what they found out when they do this mapping is not only are there pyramids, but there's like whole civilizations. And not only that, is that like the Amazon was planted. Yeah. Like all those, all those plants and species, that's just because they were unchecked. Like nobody cut them, nobody pruned them, and they just were allowed to grow wild. And when they grew wild, that is the, you know, but all that stuff was planted at some point in history. So that's crazy. Well, because um, some of those ancient civilizations to be, to grow in the numbers that they grew to would have had to have um, agriculture to, to sustain that many people. And that was, that's the problem that they've always had is that in that case, the they know the soil isn't right for agriculture. It's too it's too acidic, and all the plants that live there are are adapted to it. And but it's it's for crop growth like corn and stuff. You can't you can't sustain it because of the I think the acidity in the soil. I believe. So, so, back to Bird. Mm-hmm. He was searching for New Schwabenland. Mm-hmm. Um, specifically, the rumors... That was the name of the German ship, correct? Uh, I believe so, yeah. The SS Schwabenland. Okay. That was the German ship that was sent to explore and looking for what they said was um, a place to go hunt whales to get whale oil for margarine <laughs> specifically yeah <laughs> uh so they never did find station 211 mm-hmm. um but but in 2016 in the arctic in the north, they did find a Nazi radio station that hadn't been touched since the 30s. And when they, like, did some more research, it was abandoned because the guys ate some undercooked polar bear meat and got sick. Hmm. But they had set up a base and it was a radio station and it was like 1100 miles from Russia and they had a small crew the Nazis had a small crew up there uh, operating this radio station um, and it was kind of said throughout the, like, the German military that their idea was to have bases to attack from the poles because they had an advantage over everybody if they could establish bases at the poles. Whereas in Europe, they're kind of surrounded. Mm-hmm. You know, and this gets back to what Hitler liked about the United States was how we, because we, we really did come pretty fast. Mm-hmm. Like it, it, on the scale of world history, you know, what are we? Yeah, 1776, we're like 200 and almost 50 years in, right? Yeah. And we're like, you know, 
as far as like we've broken a lot of world records yeah. as far as like uh, commerce and military and all that yeah and part of the reason we've been able to do that we're we're isolated mm-hmm. um you know we have two big barriers you know the atlantic <laughs> and the pacific oh, okay i thought you were gonna say canada and mexico <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, it's been a long time since we've been at war with either of them. <laughs> Sorry, love you both countries, but you make good barriers. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a guy on our, uh, I was in a golf league <laughs> briefly. One, one time he came to, uh, like, the golf league with a shirt that said back-to-back World War Champions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, J.J. Watt wore one once. It was like on 4th of July when he was still playing. Did he get <laughs> flack for it? <laughs> yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, so on Reddit, I looked for like some Admiral Byrd stuff, and I did come across his grandson. Mm-hmm. Um, great-grandson, I guess said that they don't really take stock in, like, the Middle Earth thing, but he doesn't think that that's, like, a a sticky point. He's like, you know, (laughs) what he did discover is crazy. And he's like... So the reason they don't come to that as a sticky point because his this part of his diary was written in a memoir later after he died. Yeah. Um by somebody else. Yeah, it, so, his, his son published it like way later after he died. And it was ghost written too, right? By somebody else. Um yeah, something like that. Okay. Um all right. Well, I mean, we can keep going. But do you want to get into some facts? Or do you want to get into, like, what we think? Yeah. All right. Um, All right. Yeah, let's get into what we think. Uh, Okay. So um, I'll get first on this one. All right. Um, All right. So the Admiral Byrd story is absolutely fantastic. It's great. Mm Mm-hmm. It should be a movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I love Middle Earth, that whole idea. I'm not a ju- – I do like The Hobbit. I'm not a crazy Lord of the Rings fan. Um, I did bartend at the New Line Cinemas party mm-hmm. when Lord of the Rings came out. Mm-hmm. And when they lost to Cinderella Man – the whole entire party went south and there were a bunch of drunk hobbits everywhere, which was hysterical. (laughs) (laughs) Just a bunch of little five foot five people (laughs) just getting hammered because they should have won. They created a whole (laughs) middle earth, right? (laughs) And they lost the Cinderella man. But the bird story, it was rewritten. And the guy that rewrote it took liberties. Um, well, it wasn't it through a, it was like a Spanish newspaper that did an interview with him. And then it was translated and they took, he took liberties with his translation. So, yeah, it was way out of context. Yeah. Because like, one of the things he said was that the next war we'll have to deal with, what he said was, what he said was that um, planes that could fly, you know, from Antarctica and attack, right? Range pole, if they had a ball. pole to pole. Yeah. Well, they, they said asked, they could. Yeah, they said they could move from pole to pole. And what he what he meant by that was like a, a pretty good speed. Mm-hmm. And what they took it as was that you know, like it's more of a instantaneous mm-hmm. type of thing. Um. And they also took it out of context that this was otherworldly. Mm-hmm. It is crazy to me that 
there's a bunch of civilizations that believe in Middle Earth or it's part of their history or folklore or whatever. Right. Like the Great Flood. Because I think people in general believe, if you don't believe in Noah's Ark, you do believe that there was this flood. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, in Turkey is Mount Ararat and they have something called in the CIA called the Ararat anomaly. And this guy, I saw this thing on it and he said, you can't say the N word. You can't say they'll shut it down, but you can talk about the Ararat anomaly. And there is, it looks like a boat. (laughs) It does (laughs) look like, it looks like a boat is there. There's also other videos where like super rich Chinese people are like in the ice looking at these big timbers. But um, when it comes to the Admiral Byrd story, it's just that it's a story because like you said, they, they were turned around for weather. And I believe that I believe they were like, especially looking like it's all wrong, right? They have dogs. They have like they're prepared for like the Arctic. Yeah, not the the Antarctic is so much harsher than you know the Arctic. First of all, it's a desert. Yeah, and you can't break ice the whole time. That the Arctic is frozen water, and the and then Antarctica is frozen ground. Like it's there's right ground under there, not water. So, I am a non-believer, even though I want to be. And I love the story. I, I there's just a lot of problems with it. Mm-hmm. I, I don't believe that the aliens speak German. <laughs> I just don't. I don't think they fans speak of swastikas. Yeah, I just that's a hard one to get past. That was a hard one to get past without even doing like any research. <laughs> yeah, alien Nazis, right? There's a there's a nice movie. ones. They were friendly Nazis too. <laughs> right, right, right. There's a movie called Iron Sky. Yeah, yeah. Where have you seen that? Yeah, with the with the Nazis on the moon. Yeah, you've seen that. Not many people have seen that. Uh, actually, our friend in Finland was the one that showed it to me. He's like, "Have you ever seen Iron Sky?" And I'm like, "No." Yeah, moon Nazis. And yeah, we got some Finnish beer and we watched Moon Nazis. Pretty good, pretty good. I'll give it to him. I'll give it to him. Um, but like, yeah, that that was a problem for me. But then when you do research on it, it's it's in my uh, in my opinion. <laughs> but yeah. anyway, what I came to find out was it's it's bullshit. However, I do think there's a pyramids. Like I know, like people say they've been saying those are you know just mountains. However, they've been saying that about a lot of mountains that are pyramids. Mm -hmm. Like, especially when you look at, like, in Mexico, stuff that was overgrown when they excavated, it's full on pyramids. Yeah. They look like hills before they were excavated. And then, you know, that thing in Bosnia, that's another. and and when you were talking about they're all over the earth, they are. They are. They're over, on all. They are all the continents. I'm pretty positive about that. And you know, like my stoner roommate that would drop knowledge all the time, Joe Rogan said, you know, he kind of thought that the Egyptians just happened upon the pyramids, yeah. and they're like, yeah, we built these. Yep. As and and I never thought about it like that, but like. Yeah, I mean, if you're wandering in the desert, if you have scouts in the desert, like looking for people, and you're you're a king, right? Mm-hmm. And they're like, dude, there's three giant pyramids, you know? Did you ever hear and, Andrew Schwartz where he was talking about? He goes, they can't uh, figure out where they're like. There's pyramids in Egypt, and they can't figure out who built them. They can't decide who built them. And he was like. There's pyramids in Mexico too, but nobody doubts who built those. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. Right? It's true. It's true. 
<laughs> but like, but like the the so the oldest pyramid is ye, is the the biggest one, right? The uh, oldest in the world now. Well, no, 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 in Egypt. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm pretty okay, sure. Okay, so so that one, there's some dispute over how it was built. Actually, built no, it. there's older ones in Egypt. They're like step pyramids that are um, okay, but are but they they fucked up like the later ones, like the bent pyramid. Mm-hmm was built after Giza. Mm-hmm. So, like, if they have that knowledge, how'd they fuck up? That somebody didn't carry the one? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> somebody was off? It wasn't passed down properly. So that leads into the second thing, is that I totally believe that that, that there was an ancient civilization there. And that makes... I mean, I think there's a lot of lost knowledge. There was a book that Mario and I read, and the problem with archaeology is they call it, it's just anomalies, is that they say. <laughs> there's, yeah. ba- you know, there's Baghdad gold batteries. chains. Baghdad batteries, right. And, I mean, to me, that makes a lot of sense that because... I mean, some technology is ahead of its time and it doesn't have its use. I mean, that's absolutely you don't know what to do with it. That's happened. It's happening now, even. So, I mean, like, you know, when I talk about like Bitcoin with people, they're like, I don't know, why would I ever use Bitcoin? And I'm like, well, okay. Well, for one thing, (laughs) you're not allowed to leave the country with more than $10,000 in cash. Mm-hmm. you go on a list right or right. you have to check it and you have to whatever okay but now you could have bitcoin fly wherever you want and just go to a bitcoin atm mm-hmm. that's a big deal that's a huge deal that's just one small little thing and the reason that's a big deal is because like the um the blockchain technology it makes Every transaction that happens now, absolutely like obsolete. Like right now, you go through uh, if if you pay for something at the gas station, it goes through a clearinghouse, and that clearinghouse is like, yeah, Brandon paid fifty dollars to Shell gas station. We owe Shell fifty dollars, and that takes three days, right? Yeah, and I'm like, I only got like a sandwich and a drink. <laughs> right. Then you dispute it. That takes three days. To... <laughs> <laughs> um, but like, but now when it's instant, there's nothing, you know, that, that three days is like gone. So like, there's little things like that. And, and yeah, like, how do you use that? And mm-hmm. like. You know, that's just one tiny little thing. And yeah, you're right. You have these technologies that show up and you're like, okay, well, what do we do with that? You know? Yeah. And you go back to like, like Bob Lazar. Okay. You have a technology that you, you, you're like, holy shit, this changes everything. But then you're like, yeah, but how do we control it? How do you, you know? What I mean? Yeah. Cause sometimes you did, it's, sometimes it's centralized reason. It's usually a centralized reason why they're doing something. Or discover something it's because you were trying to fix something else you know and you're focused on this one thing how do i address this one problem and it's like those ba- like we're saying the baghdad batteries if there was like one thing that that they were like if we could just get this to have you know some way to turn on by itself and somebody came up with the battery and it was for this one thing, but they didn't realize they could like light houses and you know what I mean? Do all this yep. other stuff with it. And it kind of just died off because it didn't really have a use. I mean, that, that was uh, the phone. The phone wasn't a, people were like, what phone, you know, even, even electric back in the day and, and lights and stuff like that. People were hesitant about it. People didn't want to do it. Stuff almost died off, you know? Because right, well, the electric car, um, there was one in 1914, right? Well, there was a lot of them. <laughs> so, um, Chicago was like the first city to register vehicles, 
And when they registered the first so many hundred vehicles, um, it was like there was uh, the most, the majority of them were electric and steam. And then there was just a couple combustion engines. There's only a, a handful of combustion engines, but most were electric and steam. Well, it's, it's short. There was as distance. many electric as there were steam. And, and the electric technology for cars died off because the combustion engine was going faster. Yeah. They could get it to go faster. And they were like, wow, and they just kind of gave up on it. I mean, in like, okay, this, this is one. Um, remember Beta and VHS? Yeah. Okay. Beta lost to VHS and everything came out VHS. And yeah. this is, we're totally 90s kids. Mario, right. this, this might be past <laughs> your knowledge. Uh, but like, but when I moved to Los Angeles, Beta was a higher quality. Everything that you shot, you shot on Beta. Because you could, you could use Beta to digitize it. Mm-hmm where you couldn't use VHS Mm -hmm. and when they shot VHS or put it on VHS and not beta, that's why it says this has been formatted for your TV. Right. Because you had the TVs different than film and like, um, there's certain parts of film. So you use, so like film is 70 millimeter and you'll see it every once in a while in a movie one of them is in Pulp Fiction where Jules turns around and he shoots the guy on the couch. Mm-hmm. If you see, like, that's one shot, but he actually moves within that shot to the left. And that's, that's what the, that creates that effect. So, like, beta up until, up until full digital, like, full digital. Beta was used for all TV shows. Everything came out, and uh, you know when they did their dailies before they cut it, it went to Beta, not VHS. Um, so, so yeah, like in a tiny way like that, it's weird. AI, AI is another one. AI has been around like that. Tom Cruise movie came out fucking forever ago. They've <laughs> been, they've had like when we see AI now, everybody's like it's scary. It's scary because it's been around. <laughs> you had know, the first robot that they programmed that had this component of, and and artificial intelligence is really in quotes because it's like you know does a thing for itself or whatever. But it gave a message that it was going to seek out and kill all the humans. <laughs> uh oh. Unplugged. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're done with you. <laughs> yeah. All right. But there, in my opinion, something in Antarctica is happening. There is either a ridiculous amount of resources that collectively. Well, if you think about, there was a there was the movie. What the hell was it called? It was the movie about the code breakers of. World War II from Britain and Alan Turing, right? Okay. And the the Turing test, imitation game. Yeah, that th- there you go. The Turing test. That's is why we to, hired Mario. Is to determine um, AI. If it if if you get like the you, when you do a Turing test on AI, you test to see if you can tell the difference between it being a machine and a person. It's Hmm. called the Turing test. That's how old AI is, is Alan Turing came up with this test in like 1950. Wow. So Yeah, I mean, yeah, so If you haven't seen the movie Ex Machina, the movie Ex Machina is basically all about the Turing test. I'm going to watch that tonight a, while I'm editing this. It's a fantastic movie. It's one of my favorites of all time. I'm going to watch that when I'm editing this. So <laughs> there's got to be, like, I, I do think that there is this push 
that I think more so than any other time in history to either. So how do I say this? There's a link between all human people, like all people, all of us, Mm -hmm. that there's a link that goes deeper than this country started that country, you know, like, cause everybody tries to lay claim that they were the first to do X, you know? Yeah. And like, you know, like, um, America is called the great experiment. Well, there's been several countries that have done exactly what we did. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, empires, yeah, you know, there, there's been several empires that have developed crazy technologies. Like I've, I've heard that it was more common for Romans to have indoor plumbing than people in America at the turn of the century, 1900, you know? Yeah. So like, you know, everybody claims like different things. So, I think now there's this push to like, okay, either we were created, we were created, and there's evidence of that somewhere in Antarctica, or like there is some kind of technology or resource that's there that collectively, like these nations that typically don't get along get mm-hmm. along there and i i don't know why they would Fear. because it's there maybe maybe fine okay cool maybe it is fear and they're like you know what something's up <laughs> yeah and so as much as there's like the ufo or uap or whatever they've also said there's usos where like you know spaceships fly right into the ocean without a splash yeah, or rise up all, out of it. There's also like where they fly through mountains. That's been observed, and they don't know how that happens. And mm-hmm. so, like, you know, if there's some kind of force or resource, and you know, it was discovered through Antarctica because that one pyramid, they say it's two kilometers on each side and it's perfectly square. And if you look at that range quotes, Mm. it looks like Giza, dude. It looks like they're all in line, just like the pyramids in Egypt. And then when they say like, well, what were they? They're like, well, it's like a power station. Mm -hmm. So yeah, man, I'm all in. (laughs) There was, an ancient civilization, I'm all in that we still don't understand the pyramids. There's some kind of technology there. It exists in Antarctica, and maybe because it's untouched, they're able to study it. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't believe in the Admiral Byrd Middle Earth theory because I don't believe that aliens speak German. Or that they have swastikas. However, there was the Bell. The Bell UFO was this technology that Germans came up with. and It was another thing they didn't understand. They surrounded this thing with, uh, it looked like a bell. And they surrounded it with electric current. And they didn't know what to do with it. So, I don't think the Admiral Bird thing happened. I do think that Antarctica is a place for everybody to collectively study, whether it's out of fear or that it's knowledge. They're like, just send scientists down there. Like, everybody's cool. We're cool. We're not going to fight. You know, like, like don't steal mm-hmm. technology. Let's share knowledge. Let's try to figure it out. It's like its own Area 51 where they're trying to figure out whatever's going on down there. So that's kind of where I stand. For me, I, uh, I'm like, I, in my head, it's like, okay, Admiral Byrd, the 
the reason they went down there was one to find out what the Germans were doing. Two, they were going to try and establish Antarctica as a sovereign United States territory. And they didn't tell anybody. And they, uh, when they got down there, they didn't find the base. And at that time, there was already talks in the works about, because who's not going to perk up when they see, you know, a whole freaking fleet of 13 ships from the United States heading to Antarctica, you know, all mm-hmm. the other countries are going, what, hey, what are you doing? You know? Mm-hmm. And so I think talk started and I think we were advanced enough as a civilization to see that count, the writing on the wall. So they got together and they said, Hey, this is off limits because we see the potential for this to be fought over and warred over and destroyed. And you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And this should be a place for research. And I think stronger heads prevailed on it. I don't, as far as all the rest of it's concerned, very much so it could have been that could have been a lush tropic whatever land and we saw a pole shift and that it went to shit, you know what I mean, overnight and it's buried so deep under snow that nobody could ever know, you know. It could totally be uh, who knows, because it's it's one of those things where it's like it's such a massive place. It's so unexplored that anything could be out there. You know, if there's some kind of um, like, you know, warming, like you're saying from underground, could there be like life out there? I think the idea that there's like woolly mammoths running around sounds cool, but um, I don't, I, I don't know what's going on. And just like, I don't know what's going on in the bottom of the ocean. So I can't say anything about the, the rest of it because I have no clue. Like it's it's so so far beyond my reach and sight and you know what I mean? So I don't Joe, believe I, I don't believe that diary stuff, you know. So Joe Rogan had a guy on that was down there and he's like, Okay, so what what's going on there? And he's like, Well, it's for one thing, it's he, he's like <laughs> he's like, You have no idea. He's like, I thought I knew what, like, crevasses in the ice were. He's like, they're miles deep. Yeah. He's like, and you can't, you, there's nothing that could get you out. Mm-hmm. He's like, it's terrifying. <laughs> he's mm-hmm. like, yeah, I, he's like, I'm, I'm like, bring it, whatever, let's do it. He's like, but when I was down there, he's like, you are constantly out of 10 of awareness of where you're at. Yeah. Cause it's like millions of years of snow, you know, it's like crazy. 10, thousands right. and thousands and thousands of years of snow. It's like, so who knows what's going on out there and who knows what was there, you know, who knows if, it, if that, that whole continent slid down to that position as the you know tectonic plate action and Pangea broke apart and blah blah blah, or was it something that was much earlier than that and the poles shifted or something like that? So, um, so what about because you're like you're like me, you believe that there was a civilization or something before. So, what about that in Antarctica? What now? Like a, like a, a, an advanced civilization before? Yeah, it's totally possible. I mean, they're they're they they could have been living high on the hog, right? You could have even had it to the point where it was like some. You remember the show we did about the guy that went like three thousand years into the future, right? It could be like a a it could have been a civilization like that. They could have been so far beyond what we were and then this catastrophic world changing event happened like a pole shift and boom they're done you know and it wipes everybody out so who knows 
It's bizarre that it has because a lot of the other land could have been unlivable to them, you know. Because the difference in the North and the South Pole is that the North Pole is like frozen tundra and ice, but then the South Pole it's elevated. Like there is a definite wall. Well, think about it. Like, <laughs> think about it like this. Right now, if there was like, say, there was like this pole shift, right, and oh. and the people, like, if or not even a pole shift, if just imagine if there was like kind of like a deep freeze or something, you know, we went through an ice age, and your warmest points are going to be around the equator. So if, if this, if there's like a catastrophic, like what was that one movie where it was like all of a sudden they, they had like, um, it f- froze like instantly. Everything was freezing. Oh, the day after Laura or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> there's like some cyclonic force or whatever. Uh, so if you got like everything freezes, right. And all the, all those people are like killed off. The people that would re- be have the highest chance of survival would be the people that lived in the warmest places, which would be closest to the equator. Correct. Mm-hmm. Not a lot of technology around the equator. Yeah, I would agree with that. So the people that that would survive most likely would be very under technologically advanced. They'd be primitive still. Like there's a lot of primitive living people on the equator. Well, as somebody that like so, if, read- they, if they if they inherited the Earth, it'd be like a do over. Okay, I mean, I had if there was a, only had- like these small pockets of people that were left over, and they were like already living in mud huts, you know what I mean, and didn't understand anything outside of their their village, or even why this event happened, you know what I mean. And then people yeah. st- people would have to migrate again, move to the different places, and they'd still be primitive because they they'd leave any knowledge they have behind I and mean, carry with them just what they could remember and pass down if they did. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, and if you didn't read and write either, you know, which you don't want to say that about the people, but it's true. There's if you think about the um the people because it's it's a well it's different civilizations you, kept different it's easier to live around the the equator. record keeping was different mm-hmm. like sometimes it's stories sometimes it's written sometimes you know and then that evolves but struggle advances technology so absolutely like, I, that's what i was just gonna say i had i had a house in uh like way out in the country and everything i learned to do it was out of necessity. Mm-hmm. Absolutely every single thing I learned to do was out of necessity. Right. Um, and I, I, I agree with you there. Yeah. And nowadays you got like, you can got YouTube. So it <laughs> don't matter where you're at. But if, if everything was gone and the only people around didn't know how to build it, you know, eventually they would because necessity. But, it, it would be like a hard restart. And it, when you're talking about dwindling down to such small numbers, all that history is going to get lost. It's, mm. it's, you got to figure that like 99.9% of the world's history would be lost if only the people that like only small groups of people that lived near the equator remained. 99.9% of all the history of the world would be gone because it's not like, I mean, there's stuff I don't know about, other, you know, there's tons of history of all these other regions that we don't know. We know the, the big events and the, you know, the memorable stuff. And even then, how much are you going to get right? How much are you going to get wrong? It will get. So Sharon and Beverly. So yeah, tech civilization could do get start all over again and it totally could have been <sighs> Antarctica or anywhere on the planet really honestly the whole planet so that that book is, that book is called um 
the lost star of myth and time. And that says a lot of what you're saying. Yeah. Um, and like back to Turkey there, I don't know. Um, there's a village right next to, um, Noah's Ark. Um, that, that book was what Mario was telling me. Um, who is it, Mar? Walter Cruttenden was the author of it. Okay, that, that's a really good book, dude. Honestly, it, it talks about all these different, like the Baghdad battery. It talks about all these different things um, that, you know, come up with exactly what you're saying with, like, maybe people just had to jet and, you know, like, and the, and all that progress was like lost, you know. Yeah, that, that, I think I, I think that well, because there's evidence that that's happened already on our planet. Like I said, there's stuff that that um, you know, like the like I, I'll keep bringing them up, but the Baghdad batteries because I've always been fascinated by them because I'm like, you know, that's just like a example of a technology that was discovered and then was, you know lost forever you know because it was lost for a long time till we rediscovered how to make batteries you know what i mean but it was a battery i mean it was so a, like, it, it, essentially it was a battery it is a battery right because it was a it was a coil mm-hmm. it was a it was a copper coil yep and they used pig stomach acid mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that created a charge. Yeah, and they sealed the tops with like tar and yeah. So, like, just real quick, in Turkey, they're right next to where Noah's Ark <laughs> quotes. <laughs> uh, there's this village called the Village of Arzep, yeah, which stands for the Village of Eight. Yeah. And there were eight people <laughs> on Noah's Ark when it landed. So, yeah, man. Well, in Turkey, Turkey, that's that's a in that country. Like, if you watch, they they've had like they got like a um, when they do um, construction and they mm-hmm. have to like excavate. If they yeah, come right. across anything like that, they have to shut down the site. And wait for archaeologists to come in and remove whatever it is. They sometimes they shut down for a long time, and one of those times happened where they were building something, and um, they came across these old timbers, and they stopped. They got they it was one of those huge construction companies and huge sites. So they have their own, there's an on site archaeologist. Mm-hmm. So they come across these timbers and he shuts the site down and they discovered the world's oldest seaport. Fuck, right? And it was like, there was boats and dock. Right. And this was underground. So even like, even right now in Namibia, mm-hmm. there's a whole desert full of like shipwrecks. Yeah. Because like the way that the ocean shifted, mm-hmm. You know, yeah, dude, it's shit like that's crazy. Like, yeah. and back to your turkey thing, mm-hmm. there was a guy in Turkey that was like remodeling his house. Yeah, and he found like <laughs> something crazy, like a five thousand year old, like cave inhabited that just was tied to the house somehow. Yeah, and they had to, like you said, they stopped. They brought in all these archaeologists. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's nuts, man. Yeah, Turkey and, tur- that happens in Turkey a lot where they get the right. they they find these it's ca- crazy how old some of the stuff that they're finding is. But that What's the- funny? There was a did you ever see that um there's a movie with Matthew Perry and he it's Salma Hayek. It's called Fools Rush In. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And at the beginning they're at like a cocktail party. It's like an artist show and it's all butts. Yeah, it's like butts from around the world. Yeah, 
And he's like, there's one from Turkey. And he's like, I didn't realize things were so hairy down in Turkey. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So where are you at? Where are you staying? I, 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 I think Bird went there for some secret military reasons disguised as exploration and nothing really panned out for him and they came back and who knows what the fuck's out there yep all right so on bird we're doubtful yeah, uh, but yeah i don't believe i don't believe that that he that's a super meticulous log why you're flying a plane I agree. So if you go and if you go and look us up and listen, because you can find it, and there's even a video where the guy reads the the log verbatim or whatever, and it's like he was writing this while he was flying the plane. I agree. <laughs> I agree. I agree because like all flight entries are like they're four or five word sentences. Yeah. Yeah. Not like this is incredible. I believe I saw uh, a mammoth. Uh, I'm going to get closer right, so that I can use right. my binoculars. It's definitely a mammoth. They, like it's like right. you're writing all this while you're flying a plane. All right, that's uh, cool because it's totally like journal logs. It's like uh, it, is. it gets, puts the time and everything. So okay, and then what about like? Um, pyramids and things like that. I don't Antarctica. believe there's anything active out there, but I don't know. I just think that no, there could I, well, have been they're not something. Active, but like, do you yeah. think that that chain of mountains... Super possible. Okay. And then what about it used to be a continent that was flourishing? Super possible. Yeah, I think I'm going to say that. So we're down for a bird and then uh, super possible on the rest of Arizona. Yeah, yeah. And rock on Antarctica. You guys are awesome. I feel like the, I feel like one thing that's missing in our Antarctica is like a band going there and having a concert. If we say Antarctica enough and you put it in the title enough, maybe somebody <laughs> in Antarctica will listen to us and we'll pick up a, another country. Uh, yeah, because we don't have Antarctica, do we? I know. Oh, that would God, be that would be wild. I really feel like that is something. If I was, if I was still in a band, I was still playing. I would be live from Antarctica, <laughs> and I would have all five thousand, right? <laughs> Even if it's all three hundred in the in the winter, <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> and I would do a concert live from Antarctica, and I would put that shit on YouTube. That would be hot. <laughs> that would be hot. Everybody would fucking watch it. You know, <laughs> and I don't know why somebody hasn't done that yet. Like, I don't, I don't know who, I don't know who's like, fucking. <laughs> I, you know, I hate to say it. You know who should do it? I hate it. I hate it. Taylor Swift should fucking do it. Like, so <laughs> it's got to be somebody that's like at the pinnacle. You're gonna get a bunch of little girls killed in the Antarctic winter. You know what, though, man? I mean, like, it's got to be somebody like that, right? It's got to be somebody like uh, Prince is dead. But, like, it's got to be, like, somebody. Vanilla. Somebody, ice. Uh, yeah, Mario. Vanilla coming Ice. In, coming in strong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, he's got one song. He's going to go all the yeah. way down there for one song. For one song. <laughs> Yeah, who else could be there? Snow, yeah, the former, yeah, <laughs> uh, Ice Cube, yep. Maybe you have Snow, Ice Cube, Vanilla Ice, Ice Tea, <laughs> Ice Tea. <laughs> you mean to tell me? <laughs> no, but I think that's a missed opportunity. But I, th- I think we, I think we nailed it. Yeah. All right, I'm good with that. You good with that? Yep. All right, cool. I'm Anthony. I'm Brandon. I'm Mario. And this is Everything That's Weird. For show notes and merchandise, go to www.everythingthatsweird.com. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter. And be sure to like, subscribe, 
and review anywhere that you listen to podcasts. Thank you for listening. See you next time. Thank you for listening to the podcast. If you'd like to contribute, please go to our Patreon page at Everything That's Weird. Check us out on Instagram at Everything That's Weird or Twitter at ETWPod. Or if you'd like to send us an old-fashioned email, go to everythingthatsweird at gmail.com.